Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Yesterday morning, after a mission of 16 days, the space shuttle begins re-entry, and everything seems just fine. You are go for the burn. Okay, we copy go for the burn right now. We're leaving the then, at 9 a.m., the Columbia suddenly loses all communication. Columbia out of communications at present uh, with mission control. And disappears from the radar screen. Minutes later, this was the tragic scene across the skies of Texas. And then, the debris on the ground scattered across the southwest. And this telling picture at the White House as President Bush addressed the nation. The Columbia's lost. There are no survivors. What happened? And what will be the future of the space program? With us, the administrator of NASA, Sean O'Keefe. Three former astronauts. Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon in 1969. Rick Hout, the commander of STS-26 Discovery, the first shuttle flight flown after the Challenger accident of 1986. And United States Senator Bill Nelson, who in 1986 flew aboard the actual shuttle lost yesterday. Then some closing thoughts from the first man to orbit the Earth aboard Friendship 7 in 1962, and who returned to space in 1998 aboard STS-95 Discovery at age 77. With us, Senator John Glenn. But first, joining us live from the Kennedy Space Center, the man who has covered the space program for NBC News for 45 years, Jay Barbary. Jay, the investigation has begun. A lot of public speculation about perhaps some damage done to the left wing area of the space shuttle. What can you tell us? Well, what I can tell you is that they really don't know what happened, uh, Tim, because at the time that they were coming in, they were at the peak point where they had the most stress on the shuttle Columbia itself, as well as the highest heating conditions. 3,000 degrees on the leading uh, edge of the wings. Now, we've heard uh, terms being used, it exploded. We don't know if it exploded. They don't know what happened. There has been some speculation uh, because of a piece of foam that fell off of the external fuel tank during liftoff that that hit the left wing, could have done some damage to the tiles. These heat tiles are uh, beneath the shuttle, and they are the device between this tremendous heat and keeping the astronauts alive. Well, there is a slim possibility that it could have done enough damage that when they were under this tremendous stress and heat, that the tiles could have, start, could have started coming off. They could have had an avalanche of losing tiles, and this could have lost the uh, shuttle uh, Columbia. However, there could have been a structural failure. Also at that point, they were in their early S turns. This is where they're turning to dampen their speed because they come in hot, Tim. They want to overshoot their landing area, so they make sure that they get here. And the, what they do is they do these S turns to dampen down this energy so they come in precisely as a glider and land here at the landing strip at the Kennedy Space Center. Now, in this point of high stress, they were 39 miles above Texas, moving at 12,500 miles per hour. If the bank had been just a little too much, or if they'd got the nose of the shuttle a little low or a little high, it could have started tumbling through space. There are so many things that could have happened, but we don't know yet, and we won't know. The inspectors are on their way. There's an internal inspection, and there's also a board being appointed for an external inspection. But the one thing we do know, Tim, about the space family, they're a dedicated bunch. They'll find out what happened, and they'll get back to flying. Jay Barbary, you have covered all 144 missions. You witnessed on January 27, 1967, the fire at Apollo 1, and January 28, 86, the explosion of the Challenger. How long does it take the NASA family to regroup and get on with their mission after such tragedies? Well, Tim, if they get lucky with this, if the inspectors can pin down what happened right away and they can isolate it to Columbia, then they can go ahead and fix Atlantis, Discovery, and Endeavor, and they can continue to fly. It's essential because we do have an International Space Station in orbit that we continue the missions. However, the International Space Station does have a Soyuz spacecraft docked at all times. 
This is the crew escape vehicle. So if something goes wrong up there, they can leave. If fire should break out, they can leave any time and head back to Russia for a landing. So they do have that safety there. They can extend the crew its own board. They were to be exchanged the next month with the next crew. Atlantis was scheduled to go up on March the 1st. But they can leave them up there as much as a year because Russian cosmonauts have already spent over a year on the Mir space station. So they have supply ships going up from Russia. Progress module is to take off, go up there today, as a matter of fact. Keep bringing up cargo, food, everything that they need. So they can take care of things up there right now. But the best news that they could get is to isolate what happened as early as possible, be sure this is what has happened, and then pin down the problem and work in line with the other uh, shuttles to continue flying to the space station, Tim. Jay Barbie, we thank you as always for your report. I know you'll be on duty all day, all week, all year long for NBC News. Now let's go to Dan Archer of NBC affiliate KCEN in Waco, Texas, who recorded the actual disintegration of the shuttle yesterday morning. Dan, welcome. You are out on I-35 outside your station there, as you've done in the past, camera, uh, again, lens against the eye, looking into the sky for a routine re-entry of the shuttle. These are the pictures you saw. We'll show them to the country. There it is, suddenly not just a white streak, but a ball, a flame, an apparent disintegration. As you were watching those pictures through your lens, Dan Archer, did you know you were recording tragic history? Tim, uh, I had no, I no idea. I uh, started uh, at at eight central time to uh, hoping to capture the majestic view of the space shuttle flying over our studio that I could share with Central Texas at a later time. I had no clue that uh, what I was recording was, in fact, uh, the demise of the uh, Columbia. Had you ever seen anything like this before? In your previous shootings of the shuttle, it looked much different, didn't it? Yes, it did, uh, Tim. Uh, you know, I've seen uh, evening uh, flyovers, and uh, I've seen uh, where the shuttle was uh, uh, very clearly uh, viewed in the daylight. And uh, because of that is why I, I uh, wanted to record it. Uh, it was uh, such an awesome sight to see it fly over Central Texas. Dan Archer, we thank you for being on duty and so alert for all of us here at NBC News and recording this tragic history.